you'd be surprised if I said I was doing that without using my hands. So what was I using then, you ask? Back to the presentation, please. Hope is the world's first eye-tracking head-to-man display for consumers. User eye movement to freely control UIs and games. For the first time, the world can react to your eyes. Current virtual reality systems have three problems. Usability. Using 2D mouse in 3D world is difficult. We don't know what depth to put the castle at. Quick reflexes are difficult. Lack of focus. Everything is in sharp focus, regardless of what the user is looking at. This can contribute to simulation sickness. Insensitivity. Characters do not know where the user is looking, which can lead to unrealistic behavior and communication. Please try to imagine. You are in a deep 3D world with a 2D mouse. Imagine trying to select the flying bird with a mouse. What kind of movement do you need to make? This? Pointing quickly and accurately is difficult. The mouse is very suitable interface for a flat screen. However, in a deep 3D world, we can do better. With our eyes, it's instant. Forbes key feature and disruptive difference is eye tracking. Oculus brought us into the virtual reality world. Hope makes the virtual reality world aware of us and responsive. Our technology will bring the new level of satisfaction to our passionate target market, hardcore PC gamers. In the next five years, the Hetman display market is expected to have a total revenue of about $11.6 billion. I am Yuka Kojima, CEO and co-founder of Forb Inc. I was a game producer in Sony Computer Entertainment. Now we will show our communication and focus demo. Let's switch to demo, please. The green spotlight here represents my gaze. As I move it around the scene, you will notice the focus changes based on what I'm looking at. I will now look at the girl as she looks back to me, and I will now look at her eyes. She now smiles at me. This is eye contact with a virtual reality character. Now let's do something a little more gamey. And back to the presentation. I'm Lachlan Wilson, CTO and co-founder of Fove Inc. I have a strong technical background in algorithms and rapid prototyping. Fove's applications for gaming are immense. Firstly, we've designed our technology from the ground up to support something called foveated rendering. Games using our hardware implementing this feature will be able to work on comparatively lower end hardware by focusing rendering resources where they're most needed, as in where the user is looking. Additionally, users of Fove will be competitive with, or even be better than, gamers using traditional keyboard and mouse setups. This is kind of unique, because virtual reality gamers typically have a lot of trouble when fighting competitively in first person games. From a technical standpoint, our technology is quite simple. We are using infrared lights and cameras to view the pupil and determine gaze direction. 
The magic here is we do this in a way that does not interfere with the field of view in any way and is completely invisible to the user. The specs that we've fixed at this time are we're using an ultra high resolution WQHD display. This is 1.7 times the pixel density of the Oculus Rift Development Kit 2. We have a comparable 100 degree field of view, at least. We have implemented high accuracy, low latency stereo eye tracking, which will allow for far greater immersion and usability when compared with the Oculus Rift. We've also implemented head orientation tracking, of course, and we're currently working on adding positional tracking to our prototype. Our SDK is going to be free, and most importantly, it will be easy to use. We aim to strongly support the indie game market from the start by integrating support with Unity 3D and other popular game engines. We are also interested in possibly expanding into the console market at a later stage. And incidentally, we have joined the Microsoft Ventures Accelerator program in London. We will be launching our Kickstarter campaign this winter. Go to our website and become a part of our community. Keep an eye on us. Thank you. All right. <laughs> oh. Thanks. Judges, any of you want to jump in? Super interesting. Can you talk a little bit more about working with developers and how far along you are? It sounds like yep. you have a, have a couple of deals with Unity and with Microsoft, and maybe you could talk yep. a little bit more about developers. So um, basically, we're a fairly early stage startup. We're just getting our hardware ready to present to game makers on a large scale. So Microsoft's basically our foot in the door, and they're helping us meet with game developers and get a word out there. Currently, we're prototyping inside Unity 3D. And we're also going to make contact with them shortly. So it's very early stage, but we're about to start pitching to the game developers themselves and show like what we've got. Great. Does a game need to be integrated in order to benefit from the eye tracking? Partly, yes. Um, it depends on the game feature, the engine's features itself. But typically speaking, you will need to have um, the mouse and the screen separate. So the cursor, like most games that are supporting the Oculus Rift, will be very easy to integrate with Faux, but it will still require a tiny little bit of like adding our SDK in there and say, like, this device controls the mouse now. And how do you convince developers? I mean, you have a little bit of a chicken and egg problem, right? You don't have, yeah. at the outset, you don't really have a huge, or you won't really have a huge customer base. That's right. And you won't have a lot of games. How do you, how do you manage? Well, we believe that the technology is quite inspiring. I mean, we can bring, you know, Iron Man type user interface technology right into your living room or bedroom, wherever you play your games. This is pretty incredible. I mean, we hope to inspire people and get them to say, like, this is cool, and we want to work with your technology. So you showed the, the headset, and you had a mouse in your hand at the same time? Uh, a just little bit. for clicking the demo. <laughs> oh, I see. So you can, you can look around, but you're shooting with your eyes, right, right, in the shooting thing. And that's cool if you're Scott from X-Men or, you know, the kind of super superhero might shoot with their eyes. Yep. But how do you see like a typical like first person shooter actually working? Okay. Like is it is that the only peripheral that you're using? Um, no. So a, a standard first person game, I mean, can benefit from using your eye. For example, someone bursts down the door and you're looking at them. You've already aimed at them. That's extremely strong. That might be too strong, and game designers will be like, no, no, we got to tone that back a bit. With the current Oculus Rift, we don't know where the like, the cursor is always at a fixed depth, or it jumps around the scene, and it's never aiming exactly where you want. So what will happen with our technology is, say I'm looking at the enemy who's just jumped in the door, the cursor will know that I'm looking at this depth, so it will place the cursor at an appropriate depth to be interacted with seamlessly. Right. I, I guess my bigger question is, like, what does the overall user experience look like? Am I still sitting at a computer with a mouse and a keyboard, but I'm just, you're replacing Maybe the monitor? Maybe a controller? Um, it's essentially, yes, it's like that. You're sitting at a computer, you have your input device of your choice, probably a controller or a keyboard and mouse, and we then provide an additional layer upon that. Thank so, you. What's, the, what's the biggest limitation outside of your control today? Sorry? What's the biggest technical limitation outside of your control today? Outside of our control in this field? Mm -hmm. Hmm. There's not a lot that's really outside of our control in this field. Um, we've got the eye tracking software working. We've got the head orientation tracking working. We just need to implement position tracking. And that's just a matter of time. I mean, 
There's so, nothing that so it's less of a uh, processing issue or performance or any of those types of things. It's really going to be about convincing the game developers That's right. to integrate and use you. Yeah, so on a, on a hardware development side and software development side, we know what we're doing and we know how to proceed. When it comes to the gaming ecosystem, we plan to market our product successfully um, to gamers by, based on inspiration and the coolness factor of what we're able to do. And it's not just games as well. I mean, we've, we're currently working with people in Japan to bring eye tracking control to their accessibility robots, which are used, from sufferers of, sorry, used by sufferers of ALS and other really severely degenerating, um, debilitating diseases. What will the unit cost? Our unit cost, we're aiming at the $400 bracket. We're going to be a little bit more expensive than the Oculus Rift. We're aiming at a slightly higher end sort of market that desires a better experience. Um, and also, we have a slight increase in technical cost. And what do you think the hardware margins will be at scale? Sorry? So what will the hardware margins be at scale? Um, at scale, we'll have fairly good margins. Um, we're looking at fairly typical production scale. We've got good suppliers from Japan. We're, we're based in Japan. We have excellent hardware suppliers, and they're giving us good prices. So, um, the margin should be appropriate for the field. Ten to thirty percent, something like that. Um, higher than that. Higher. Yep. It sounded like you were using a fair amount of commodity off-the-shelf hardware, which is great from a cost perspective. But how much of IP have you developed? What have you yep. filed? Talk a little bit about that yep. for us. So currently. Um, we're applying for several patents across the field in design, in particular. Um, how should I say? Um, we're not really using commodity. Well, it is commodity hardware. There are displays, things like that that we can purchase. But it is a unit that we're developing from scratch. So um, we will be able to protect our intellectual property. And we also will be able to protect our designs. And we believe once we secure an ecosystem, people will want to stick with us. Any other questions? All right, that was Faux. Thank you guys Thank very, you very much. much. Give it up.